Welcome to another session of Endless Legend. I'm Matt, and I'm playing the Morgar, um, the naval faction. Here I have my invisible fleet, uh, my ghost fleet, uh, consisting mostly of sea monsters, ready to fight a bigger sea monster. Yeah, as long as we can take up the Hungry War this time, I think we can actually defeat the sea monster and collect the reward without losing a ship. We might damage our hero ship again, but again, the hero is always regenerated as long as the fleet doesn't die. And we want more experience than this hero, so a defensive tactician, improving our fleet defense even more. In addition to having these war units with the incredible um, force field upgrade, it's really great. Speaking of really great things, we can upgrade our fleet more if we get some Mithrite. Hyperion Mithrite are the crucial resources for upgrading naval units to the max level. You can basically get excellent Palladian and Adamantian units with normal ground units, but I don't think really with ships. Maybe I'm wrong. Or at least, in particular, we really want that Hyperion for the, the force field. It's very good. Okay, I want to fight the sea monster. Let me... Okay, ready. It still doesn't like my chances for some reason, even though we did so well last time. It's just not fair. Okay, we're just going to keep the hero units in the back, I think. We did some good tanking with it last time, but now we have the more force to keep defending us with their force fields. And that's just what they're going to do. Now it's war level threes, we can keep them back. Or raw design number threes. And yeah, we can just <coughs> advance now. And it looks like our hero is going to be targeted by the stupid thing. I should have prepared for that. Ah, actually, it died. Ha! <laughs> Get punished. And our hero survived. So no, 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 no! Oh, never mind. Ha! <laughs> wow. What an admiral. What a lucky admiral. Or oh, maybe a skilled admiral, because his defense is so good. Avoid all those attacks. Now, now the force field is going to let us negate one of those attacks from the sea monster. As you can see there. Force field is a very effective module. Almost more effective than Fomorian's there, which is crazy, because Fomorian's there is so good. Like 30% bonus damage. Like, that's just incredible. Now, the sea monster mouth thing is very hard to take down, obviously. But we have four phases to do it, so... No! Ah, oh, I forgot about that. Well, it does actually matter. With our Vol Force attacking it, we're basically kind of guaranteed, but we're not really going to take damage from this unit. It's still going to take us ages to defeat it, although we're slowly whittling away at its defense, so... I want to make sure to move these third level wars out of the way and make sure these level 4 wars keep attacking. Hopefully it doesn't target them. And it didn't, so that's great. Bounce away. Yeah, basically we've surrounded the sea monster with our little sea monsters. Oh, it bounced out of our containment there. Fortunately, you can't give orders like after they move because they have the initiative. So initiative is very powerful. Annoyingly powerful, actually. So it looks like we are going to defeat it this round. Or next round. Or, you know, eventually. <laughs> Stupid. I hate this thing. So because we have four skills, we're never taking damage from this thing, so that's great. As you can see. And we just have to wait for our Venom Spitters or whatever they're doing there. Just slowly take it down. Like, we have the highest tier weapons. This this is really just taking so long because the sea monsters are going to be good. And hopefully we can just finally take it down during this phase. Like, come on. No, no. Oh. We've retreated. That's hyper annoying. Oh, Vought took damage there, that's unfortunate. I should have moved him away. Come on, we can defeat the sea monster. Please? Yes! We finally got it. That's great. We defeated the sea monster and gained 30 dust, 40 palladian, and everlasting boson. Which. Okay. That's fine. 40 palladian is, is a very impressive amount. Let's see what this everlasting boson does. 
um, rapid mutation. We already have that. We can retrofit it anywhere and 20% improved damage. Okay, not so good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not interested in those changes. So we have six good um, war units, two not so good war units, which we can sub out for, I don't know, maybe, um, you know, siege units in our feet. Once we get this marvelous alloys, I think we can make good uh, good units. The armor is a little bit less important. We'll have ranged units with the marvelous weapons to shoot things with, and we'll get better armors at some point. But, you know, armors of ranged units not the biggest deal. I think that should improve this district to level 2 and this district to level 2, which should solve our happiness crisis, hopefully. Hopefully. Probably not, though. Yeah, I probably overexpanded there a bit in my city. Got a bit overzealous. Um, if I am going to do that. No, I can't actually create a final level of war. Never mind. Other ships are melee ships, by the way. There's only one range ship, which is the artillery ship, which is kind of silly, but anyway. Like, realistically, a lot of ships were ranged ships. Naval warfare, but whatever. It's actually not helping. <laughs> Speaking of which, we should probably pick up a science stockpile. Maybe that will help us get it out sooner. Yeah, it actually did. That's good. I'm still improving the food of my population, of my cities. Across the world, bot batteries. It's nice to have in case they're like aquatic incursions in this area. And we don't need this adamantia that much. Now, we do want a production line. Oh, we do actually need that dimension. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, never mind. Let's cancel this. Production line. Got it. And I guess we can just build some random stuff here. A Royal University, maybe? Why not? It's kind of the point where you're not getting that much out of the industry anymore. It happens a lot sooner in this or a lot worse in this game because stockpiles are noticeably worse than conversion. The main difficulty being that you can only you can only have one stock science stockpile applied at a time. So that's very bad if you planned on <laughs> running your uh, in your science income only through uh, industry. And there's only there's a point where those stockpiles for science lose a lot of their luster. Yeah. The point comes sooner rather than later. Okay, let's we can continue expanding here. Make this sort of super triangle here. I think why not? What else are we gonna do with the city? Although Burrows uh, reasonably unhappy. No, here we're leveling up this one, so we're getting some happiness out of that. We do need to improve our happiness at some point. I wonder how much of our happiness is due to expansion disapproval. Um these upgrades are not bad together, like this this upgrade and this upgrade, minus 50% expansion disapproval, they're just mediocre on their own. I guess we can try and get uh, this Arts Council, although we don't have any access to Mithrite, so we can't actually get the Arts Council. We don't have any access to Mithrite for this either, this is very awkward, because Mithrite is really important. I wish we had some way of getting it. Maybe there's some sea fortresses we can claim from help us with that. We don't want to push green out of our territory here. We might not be able to take them on la in land battles, but we definitely can take them on in uh, sea battles, and we're going to do that. I'm going to complete this triangle here. Yeah, poor city building is making some cities here less happy than others. Although, you know, it's not the worst thing. Probably granary is something we want. Central market is something we want. Mm -hmm. Even extra boroughs is something we might want in the city. The city's not great. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have picked that up. But I do want to get the cargo docks here. And I want the cargo docks enough. It gets this bonus happiness in that city too, then I'm going to buy it out. Uh, yeah, let me just get marvelous alloys before I commit to building ground armies. The best weapons are important. 
Is there anything we can get that doesn't require Mithrite or Hyperium? Because we're choked on those resources at the moment. Hyperium less so, though. We could get this Living Lab tools. It's quite impressive. And also this Arena of Champions is quite impressive. But Enlightened Trade might be the best for us because we were relying so heavily on trade. And then we can go back and pick some of this expansion disapproval reduction stuff up. Yeah. And also, I also want to pick up these artillery ships. Because we don't have that much myth, right? The higher tech technologies are less important for us here. Sadly, they're kind of not buying myth, right, for us. I want to kill some of Green's fleets. Or just that each, each army we pick up here for free is, is one we don't have to face later. Because inevitably we're going to have to clash with green, I think. We don't have to clash with green, but we're likely to. Yeah. Okay, we're still, uh, still mad at war. Wait. Let's see if we can counter proposal them. What else are they going to give us? They have none of those. This is something. This is something we actually want. But this is something we also want. A bit more. Decoration of black spot on. Nah, they're not going to the black spot. You can trade random technologies. This is a good way for us to gain extra technologies from that. But the pit mine, no, these are not as impressive as they could be. Canal system reaping station. These are important. And Boundary would be good in general. Mycology is also good. We're spending a lot of influence here, but um, it's, it's, it's pretty good. We're basically getting a lot of technologies out of this deal, which we otherwise wouldn't be able to get. So picking up technologies via diplomacy is, is deceptively powerful, I think. I might as well go for a lot of them, actually. This is not good, but it's not bad either. <laughs> They're never going to use this, probably. Fire ship, advanced alloys, geomic labs, do I care? I care about geomic labs. Boarding vessel, no. Okay, can cut one of mine. No, I can't. Okay. What else can they give me? They can't give me cities, they can't give me resources. They don't have the resources I want. Yeah. Again, they've got a lot of free sciences. And we hit this error. Just by getting those sciences, we actually went one error up, which is kind of incredible. I wasn't aware that's how it worked. Um, we can actually go for... No, we can't. <laughs> we could go for this, but it'll just take us forever to get. I'm just going to get this uh, this upgrade, because that trade routes are the main ways of us getting stuff in this game, to be honest. King Brother well, was eloquent. The main ways of us getting st stuff. <laughs> okay, Mifrad seems to be on the market again. I'm gonna bounce up here, I think. This is a better staging area. It's not so much that I want extra territory at this point in the game, I just want to find a way to put pressure on my neighbors. Because I'm evil. On glass, though. Why, why not? You can spend that. More titanium is good. So trading technology is a way of like trying to cheat the, the it's a kind of a way of trying to cheat the system. Oh emeralds! Yes! No, I hate emeralds, they suck. <laughs> we can build another Barrow Street eventually on this terrain. Just to close out that. Can I get pixie blood? Yeah, the pixie blood is less important to us than dust water. So I want to see about getting these dust water extractors if I can get it, if I can help it. Okay, cool. We 
Where's the dust wood extractor? This this worm farm is great. This kind of awesome technology, like you farm those <laughs> giant worms. That's pretty cool. Kind of cruel, but okay, it's pretty cool too. Blood crystal. But more importantly, it's dust water extractor. Even though it's our father, you know. It's still important for us. This is level two, this is level two, this is level one, this is level one, this is level one. If we build out here, we get another level two here, but we use a level one, so I think that's not great. 85 is fine, I guess, for now. This black crystal extractor is not a priority, but we can pick it up easily, so yeah. So we're gonna pop, gonna pop the blood crystal. I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> gonna pop the blood crystal for a nice bonus. We can get more moon leaf, I think. One, two, three. Yeah. Duststalker is still not something to buy out. I really like Duststalker, but yeah. Not every game, sadly. Oh, we've already popped the moon leaf. Never mind, we have more in preparation, so. Having so much dust is really nice. At almost any stage in the game. Um, once we get enlightened trade, I guess we can even go for scientific specialization. Yeah, we have enough. I think we do want to. Now we've got marvelous alloys, we can start thinking about building really good ground units. So, let's edit this design. Let's get this, the best adamantium bow. With some dust tier armor, I think. Because we don't really need these archer units to be super sturdy. And we're gonna pick up one of these really good upgrades. Now this is this is this is probably the best, I think. This is the cheapest, which is and it's actually not that much worse than the other one. Like improved initiative is nice and all, but so is improved attack. And uh, having to use Hyperium for basic units is, is not ideal. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which I should buy a lot of Hyperium next turn. I need to buy a ton of Hyperium to pick up some light and trade. In general, my empire needs to get Hyperion if at all possible. It's good to pick up that Hyperion upgrade from the um, Kapaku. Kind of trading technologies is sort of busted in this game, to be honest. If I was playing with a friend and trying to uh, beat the AI that way, I'd probably just use trading technologies to, to catapult ourselves into higher levels of tech. Because that seems kind of strong. It's kind of surprised that that's not um, restricted in some way. I mean, we want to get this worm farm at some point here. Because it's just, yeah, it's just kind of good for the city. Now, we're making sure we're getting enough titanium from every location. Are we exploiting that? I don't think we are. We should be. Where is that titanium? Where is it? Damn it. Oh, there's so many upgrades, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. You just get that right away. Yeah. And we should build some of these new archer units. Um, which city is good at building stuff very quickly? Probably this city. Let's make some archer flags here. I think I need three to beat the quest. And these are also kind of our elite units. Three turns I'll have enough there. Hey, we have another food stockpile, that's great. You can also get another industry stockpile to help out our city there. But... And we're gonna pop this hydro mule. Get even more dust, that's obscene. Uh, where do I want more population? Probably neither this city or this city. Let's pop it there, because that's gonna take longer there. Actually, you just go like this. Yeah, that should be fine. Blood crystal. Why not? Let's pop over there. Now we can stop ambushing their fleets. They are in our territory. Yeah. And the more we... We kind of want to make life a bit difficult for green. So if they declare war on us, we won't be a bit screwed. 
We have to do it at some point, though. And now we can pull those. I don't want to say incredible archer units, but those really strong archer units. And by archer, I mean sort of like semi brawlers, because. <laughs> yeah. These are artillery units, these are necro drones, these are artillery units. I'm just gonna move in here and attack them. They're in our territory. Yeah. Getting extra experience on units is important, including our hero. This defensive buff is nice. Less nice now than it used to be, but you know, not bad. Uh, reinforcement positions are important. But yeah, we have to prioritize them. We can get more Archer 5s here on the Mates of Link. We don't need Swirl University that quickly. Yeah. can prioritize them like this. Enlightened Trade is really. It's going to be a great upgrade for us, I think. Especially since we have so much titanium production now. Um, I think that's the way we're going to improve our science going into the end game. We can't really improve our dust again from trade, but we can improve our science from trade. It would be kind of nice to have a, a hero who could benefit trade a lot via dust. I mean, I guess this hero will do when we get this, this skill on the skill tree in a couple of turns. ready for a fight. And they ran away again. This is a free way for us to generate experience, which is good. Um, yeah. They're annoyed at us, which is fine. I want to engage with them in combat at some point in the game. Um, Grasshopper Extractor? What can we get there? How much? Imperial funding is not bad here. Why not? We haven't got the Allied trade yet, so... Empty Betty has gained another upgrade as our ground commander. I think we want to move from back and pick up these extra, these powerful units we're about to produce. I want extra, I really want extra Mif Ah, here, Mifrite. Mifrite is once again available. One, two. Excellent. So now we can use the Mifrite upgrades, as in, for instance, this dust revitalizer. Oh, we need a lot of uh, glass steel for that. Never mind. Let's get tens of that. Nice. And now we can get this dust revitalizer, which will improve our dust production on the city substantially. As long as it's big enough. I want to get dust revitalizer on this system. <laughs> system. <laughs> system, like, I keep saying system, right? I want to get it over here because this Bishop Julian can benefit a lot. Um, from it, because he gets bonus dust on city, which is going to multiply that bonus quite substantially. I'm going to get a bit more glass steel next turn, or this turn. Never mind, next turn, next turn it is. Alright, we're going to bounce here. We'll engage this fleet next. Let's going to make, let's going to push green out of our seas a bit. Attacking here. Should be an easy fight for us. And they run away, so that's good. Reactivating Moonleaf for improving our science. Now we have a light and trade, which means we can get a lot of extra science from our trade systems or trade routes. In retrospect, I would have liked to have picked up a um, a Roving Clans hero. That's what they're called. So a scientific envoy here is important on almost every city, I think, for us. Although we can get this later here. We can get it here first, I think. Yeah. Pick it up here or not. The thing is it's gonna take us a lot of titanium to pick up each of these. Let's just get a bunch of titanium and then buy them out later. Scientific Envoy will improve our science output from these trade routes by 50%, which is pretty solid overall. The city is quite big, we can get a dust revitalizer here. 
when we're doing that, we're gonna put production back at that. Yeah, and I think with those dust revitalizers, etc., we can really boost our science and dust production quite substantially. I wanna, maybe I want to get rid of this brawler archetype. We can improve these very easily, so that's good. Okay, winter is coming again. Nah. Don't like winter. Bonus industry on this sitter? No, it's, it's better to get the winter effect reduction. We'll try and get that on all of our governors. Eventually. And we're just going to chase down this hapless fleet. Sorry, guys. Actually, I'm not going to auto. In case it's manual, I do want to control it. Getting extra experience is really important for our naval unit. Or our naval army, let's put it that way. Let's pick up a bunch more pearls. We can get nice pearl bonuses on our empire. I'm gonna get more of these. I still wanna get more of these archers, obviously. I can retrofit these archers to be better. Wait, let me edit this. Cursed. This is turned into battle, I think. So, yeah. I think that is, it's worth it to have these units. can retrofit this brawler as well. Yeah. This dust tier 3 shield is going to give us 30% uh, protection, versus this titanium or palladian shield is going to give us less than that, I think. Wait, do we have both? We have this already? No, no the shield is, the shield is um, part of the weaponry. Okay, I get it. Um, if we're gonna do that, we might as well pick up this. Yeah, again, Hyperium uh, Mithrite, very rare. We don't want to waste it on ground units, which are reasonably disposable, I think. Palladian, this is good for extra attack, but this is just better for defense, I think, which we're, we're worried about on these, these units. The question is, are we gonna get more defensive value out of this than out of uh, this? The answer is dust armor is a little bit better for us right now. We can get better armor later in the game, but for now we're gonna be fine with this lead or army. So we just have to build three archer units to complete the quests and we can do that. Um I guess we can we don't actually have to pick up these happiness upgrades. We can pick this upgrade up. It's pretty resource unintensive, but it gives us a lot. Mm. Speaking of giving us a lot, we should definitely make sure we have enough Mithrite to keep funding our dust revitalizers, with, combined with enough glass steel to keep doing that. Okay, next turn. Dust revitalizers and scientific envoys are going to be really important for us here. Just a little bit more. Okay, defeat two enemy armies of armies exclusively composed of units with a cursed totem accessory. Reinforcing friendly armies don't count. Alright. Dust orchids. That's really great. I love dust orchids. So we need to defeat some enemies of our new armies. Can we get the dust revitalizer here? Yes, we can. That's great. It's the Obama slogan. <laughs> Let's pick that up. Yeah. Yeah, let's get those upgrades and that's a city system. Now we have a new archer unit, we want to get the... We don't have to get this archer unit anymore. We can prioritize other things in the meantime. Because you basically have a full army of um, blood, or cold blooded killers, <laughs> which are all kind of on a ticking time bomb. So, I wonder if we can put that thing on our hero. No, we can't 
we can't put those things on our hero. That's kind of sad. <laughs> Let's see about getting our hero things that improve our unit's life. So last resort, no. Ghost Force is quite good, but no. Army Resistance, Army Piercing, Army Defense Boost is pretty solid. We want to make sure our army units don't die because of this buff. Army Attack Boost is also very solid. And Army Health Boost, we get that. Well, we'll get that next time. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just check how long I've been recording. Eventually. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Um, for some reason that works with Ender Space 2, but not with this. Alright. Sorry, uh, never mind. I'll just keep uh, playing for like another 20 40 minutes. So I need to just protect this area. Just make sure that our army controls this area so that we can just bully green a bit. We can land our fleets actually and just attack green randomly if we want to. Because we have to complete that quest somehow. Although, there might be a more subtle way of doing it. After getting these specializations, I probably just want to get naval ships so I can besiege them via via the sea. Because on our supremacy is really uh, on the seas, really. Like, we're going to have a super powered military ground army, for instance. I'm going to save some dust to build up. Uh, Fleets, by the way. I want to get each four to a better position. So. Now we just need to find someone to be able to brawl with to complete this quest. And the sooner we complete the quest, the better, because um, wonder victories are really easy to get. Uh, it's a way to improve the brightness. Wonder victories are really easy to get. And to get the bow, you have to be able to complete the quest. So, yeah, let's send the fleet up there. Why is the brightness going down? Is it because of the dust eclipse? I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, it means the computer's doing something weird. Let's just buy this worm farm. We can even get caravan array here. Why not? And are we getting scientific envoy in all cities? Yeah. Scientific Envoy is pretty important for us. It's going to be our main way of boosting our science production, actually. Let me just think, what is going to be our science capital? This city is good of science. This city is also pretty good of science. They both have a hero which benefits science. A huge amount. So we have to decide on the science capital, and the science capital is basically where we're... Uh, the computer's just being weird. Sorry if it's suddenly darker. Uh, the science capital is basically a city where we get this living lab tools. So this hero improves our science by decent demand. I guess so does this hero, we can always swap the hero. So I guess the city with the best science output has to be... Oh, we finally got... Yes, we finally got dust water, that's great. Let's check if the city with the best science output. It's, it's this, these two are good. But we, I think we have to use this city. And then we get the living lab tools in that city. And living lab tools are pretty awesome. Not just because they give you this Beauty and the Beast vibe, but because they improve their science production in the city by 100%, which is obscene. Well, I guess obscene is a strong word for you. For an upgrade that you can only get in the really end game. But yeah. It is quite good. Speaking of science, let's pick up a stockpile and let's get a couple of industry stockpiles to make sure we can improve the industry of the cities that need good upgrades in the near future. So I actually want to boost this twice so I can get the living lab tools out as fast as possible. Yeah. And now I have this army. I have to think about what to do with this army. It's certainly good. The question is, you know, so what? <laughs> we have a strong army. But, what, you know, what are we going to do with it? Hopefully the... I really hope the, the upgrades have been worth it. And the, I really hope that the Morgar armies are really as strong as they look to me. 
Let's improve this in this area. And let's improve food even more here. We're really improving the food of the city by a ton with that hero. Really great. Without having a refrigeration plot. Insane! That's completely crazy. Our science should be improving as we're picking up these uh, scientific envoys. We haven't actually gotten one yet. I'm about to pick up living lab tools, which I think is a good point for us to take a break. I'm feeling quite tired. What is this? Automatic. Bonus from terrain of industry. That's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad either. I'm sure there's a lot of upgrades which I haven't like trained myself to get every single time. In this game at least. Now we can't find the fight the Kapaku anymore because they're dead, I think. No, we're the Kapaku. No, we're truce with them at least. I want to get this hospitality dead, and hopefully I can just get an alliance of red against green. We can even black spot green if we want. Yeah, and while that's available, while we can black spot them, run into their territory, and just wreck them, but mess them up a bit at least. If I'm gonna do that, I do want to upgrade my hero's armor first. My mini hero, that is. Make them really tanky. Let's reactivate that booster and move this army up. And that living lab tools is boosting our science by a substantial margin. Substant substantial amount there. Yeah, we have all the science things we want here. We actually kind of want the Slamatology Guild. Never mind! <laughs> we don't have all the science we want. Yeah, let's get this. And let's pick up over there. And then in two turns, we can get that Climatology build on the science capital. Geomic Labs is also really great. It's basically doubled from that that's really up great upgrade on um, the lab tools. It's kind of raises some ethical questions. Like, is it okay to enslave living lab tools? Is it? I'm gonna buy some refried. Because I want to see about improving our hero. Let's just get um, improved life on all of our units. Wait. Where's this improved? Wait, no, this is regeneration. Want the one for the army, army of booster. And we also want our hero to get some better weaponry. Tier 1 weapons is pretty good. I want a good shield though. This is a good shield. Free block, bonus defense. That's nice. This gives us a lot more defense though. And more survivability, so this is probably better. This is also pretty good. This is just stronger though, I think. Let's just apply missing resource. Wait, where's the adamantium shield? Level 2. That's weird. Should be. Oh, uh, here we have this instead. This is the best one. This this weird dish thing might be the best thing we have. Since it gives us 20 defense, roughly 30% defense and 20% health. Okay, that seems like the best shield we can get. The question is, what's the best sword we can get? This is giving us 48 attack. This is giving us also 48 attack and bonus. 48 damage. Um, bonus defense though. It looks like Adamantian Sword might be the best option, although we don't have enough of that. And Hyperium is, is a decent choice. Nah, let's actually not get that. Let's just apply those changes. And we need a lot more Adamantian for a hero, it turns out. And even more Hyperium actually, if we can. Well, it turns out we can't, so... Refried Palladian it is. Refried is something we need for upgrades anyway. I'm not unhappy buying it. I do want... To, I don't want to put the newspaper. The newspaper is quite good. So let me just upgrade this here. And I think I might quarter the day there, because I'm feeling quite tired. I've recorded a lot today. Um, okay, we get this dish. Dish is good. Prepare to get served. TM. Um, 
and then we're going to also get this infantry slayer sword. It's not that much worse than this actually. Well, they're, they're comparably powerful. A bit less attack, but okay, whatever. Um, can't really pick this up because it's costing us too much adamantium. That sword looks really weird though. <laughs> they're cool, but like nobody would wield a sword like that. Like it's too fat. Anyway. Let's just get this armor. What would you want dust armor? Dust armor might even be better at this point. Dust armor is definitely better like this. Um, is this armor better or this armor better? This armor is noticeably. Yeah, let's just go for dust here armor. Doesn't deplete our important resources, keeps our hero quite strong. And yeah, we can move over there. So, let me quickly check the timer, but I presume that this is the end of the episode. Um, just because I'm tired, I'm going to take a break now. So, we've really established a powerful fleet, which we can use to clear out other fleets in our area. And now that we've done that, we might want to ally ourselves with green, sorry, with red, and take down dark green. And in the meantime, we can, you know aspire to eventually get a science victory, but I think it's more realistic that we either get a dust victory, as you can see we've produced 11% of the economy required to win the game, and to do that we're going to put some pressure on green to make sure that they don't win before we do, and even picking up some of these coastal regions will help us get increased trade routes, which is our main source of income at this point of the game, both scientific and dust-wise. So thanks again for joining me, um, see you soon.